Hello, everybody, and I want to welcome you all to another episode of RG22 Outdoor Adventures. And today, I am going to be making a hula popper for a fly rod. So for all of you fly fishers out there, hopefully you guys enjoy this. So let's get started on making this lure. And as you can see right now, the materials I'm using right now, I have a hook that is specifically designed for making a hula popper. And it has a kink in, in the shank that when the lure, when it's, when the um, wood is cut, this lure is embedded into the wood and it shouldn't twist one way or the other. It should hold it nice and secure. I also have a length of balsa wood that I'm gonna use. Nice small block. I think this block was like less than, it was like maybe half inch by half inch or three quarters, whatever it is. Anyways, um, you're gonna wanna measure how much wood you wanna use. Now you can make the tail as small as you want or you can make it as big as you want, or you can make this body as long as you want, so as long as it fits the shank of the hook. And you can put on a, a tail or some kind of like hula skirt, or whatever on the back or not, it's up to you. Um, but this one I used, uh, I measured off the shank of the hook, so I have, so I figured I'd have enough room to, to wrap some feathers around. After that, after it's all measured, uh, I then got it all cut to shape. When it was all cut, I then took the band, I took um, a saw, and then I, and then I cut right down the middle and made a um, groove down the middle with the saw, a cut. That, that hook goes inside that cut and it gets epoxied in. Before that, you want to get everything measured out. Take your circle template and then use that circle template where the fa on the face of the, what's going to be the face of the hula popper. Um, I took and um, measured my whole, me took a circle and traced it out. And then I took my carving knife and carved a cylinder. And that's how I started it. When that's all done, I then took that cylinder and I tapered it all the way down to a point. So I made a straight part of it and then I tapered it all the way down to a point. When it's all tapered and you got that cylinder all tapered, where the cut is, I took and I kind of made that flat so that way the lure sits fl flush in the water. And that's how I did that. When that was all done, I then... I then Put the lure in the hook into the lure body to the popper body and then epoxied all of that in with um i think i used um i think i i think i used super glue i may have used super glue and baking soda or i used an epoxy and um an epoxy and uh the micro balloons and after all of that is done. The epoxy or your your adhesive, however you're going to adhere the hook to the to the lure body, whether it's with super glue, super glue and baking soda, or a five minute epoxy with some micro balloons, or however you're going to do it, that's when you go ahead and start carving it to the hook, your point, and then getting it all finished sanded. And when all of that is done and sanded, um, what you can do then is you can take a Dremel tool with a little cutting bit. And then I hollowed out that face of the lure to kind of when I'm going to start stripping that fly in as a popper, it's going to start uh, moving some water and you'll hear a lot of gurgling. When all that is all done, then I took some super glue and I sealed the wood with super glue. And then that's kind of where, where we are, where I am at this uh, point right now. So the lure is all carved out, sanded and sealed with super glue. So after the lure is all done being sanded and sealed with the super glue and then sanded smooth again, it's time to move on to where we can actually start painting this lure and it starts actually looking like something. And on this particular one, um, the base coat is going to be opaque white. And like I said, multiple light coats until you build up to a nice coat where everything is all coated and covered. And don't forget to cover every inch of the lure, top, bottom, sides, and then in that, um, in the, on the face of the lure. 
So after the base coat of white, the next color that we're going to use is an opaque yellow that is going to be sprayed on the bottom and then slightly up both, um, slightly up both sides. And I was going to make the, I did multiple light coats to get a nice, really heavy, deep, rich uh, yellow. All right, well, after that yellow is all done, it's time to move on to the next color, which, as you saw, is going to be a Wicked Pearl Lime Green. Now, this color, I'm starting at the top right where the curves, so you have the top where it's flat, and then you see where it starts to curve. So I'm going from that curve, and I'm going to try to spray it downwards to kind of shade that area in a little bit with that Pearl Lime Green. And I'm going to try to take that with the overspray all the way down to... Um, the actual ending on the side of the body where it starts to right before it goes to the bottom of the lure and this is going to be a, it's uh, this is where I did a lot of shading on it moving on to the next color which is going to be pearl green and this one is going to I'm going to start at the top of the um, popper and then just kind of let the overspray go down the side, uh, sh um, shading it in as we're going down. And I'm going to do a fairly, I think it was a fairly heavy coat on the top. And then just letting it, just the mist of the paint just fall over on the sides. And it, I think it got a really nice effect of the pearl lime green. Um, that or that pearl green transitioning into that yellow and you can you can kind of see how the the shading it just goes from a dark that dark green it gets lighter and lighter till it turns yellow so as we've moved on through the um, colors on this lure we finally moved up to our um, darkest color that we're going to have on here and that is our burnt umber so we started off with a yellow, opaque yellow, moved up along the sides with a wicked lime green, went from the tops down the sides with a pearl green, and finally ending off this with the dark color of burnt umber on the top and very, very lightly down the sides. Well, we are now getting ready to paint the scales. So I've already got the screen over it. And I'm using a color shift brown gold paint, which, um, depending upon the um, angle of the lure, it will reflect a different color. And it, this stuff looks awesome um, when it's painted on and, and the light's shining on it. it. Comes out with so many different colors, and it's really cool. And I think this with um, plus um, the pearl white make really really nice scales so I think I sprayed on a fairly heavy coat on the top and then kind of um, lightened up the spraying down down the side so as you can see it looks really cool based on how the angle of the light is and if you can hopefully you can see the scales Boy, we are really getting close to finishing this lure, and um, I'm doing the the face of it now. This would be the part that's going to do a lot of popping when the lure is being pushed through, pulled through the water. And I'm going to paint this one a wicked uh, red. And you can, as you can see, I'm using the brush because I was able. I think I was able to get a more accurate uh, and a heavier application versus using the airbrush. So. In this part, we're using Wicked Red and just uh, painting it with a brush and putting on some nice heavy coats. Well, now that I've got the, the body finished, painted, um, I decided to add a little bit more detail to it. So what I did was I took, a bro I took one of my brushes and, got, and I have some opaque yellow. And I decided to put some random yellow dots across, around the body of the lure. Unfortunately, some of this obscured the um, scales, but I think it really added a nice touch to the lure. Made it look more natural, kind of almost um, like a froggy type uh, lure or hula popper. So it made it look a little froggy. So like I said, just randomly 
put the spots on and um, I think the next step after this is we're gonna we're gonna make the eyes and then after that it's actually putting finish on and tying the feathers onto the lure and and calling it done so let's keep going and let's see how let's uh, let's see what this lure is gonna look like when it's finished well I got the painting all finished the um, the under parts painted it's all done the shading everything the scales are on the mouth is painted the detail for the spots now fine and now we're we're getting right to the finishing touches of the body of the lure before we actually start um, wrapping the feathers on the on the hook shank and now right and what I'm doing now is I'm making some eyes so I took a piece of adhesive mylar it doesn't matter you can use whatever color you want as long as it's reflective and I have these uh, punches that I'm using and I'm um, I think I used a quarter inch on this one or maybe a little bit bigger and you punch the hole and you make this round circle with the punch and then um, obviously you put it on the lure and then you take some black paint and your black paint you just dab it on there with the end of the brush and you've got your pupil and once it's dry that part of the lure is all completely finished and that's where we go and uh, we start mixing the epoxy and we'll get the lure all epoxied up before we wrap it So I can't believe we are almost done with this lure. So this is the, I mean, I, we, I'm at the home stretch on this and I, it's just, I think it's looking pretty good. Anyways, uh, I'm getting ready to mix the two-part epoxy finish that I have. And remember, it's a two-part epoxy, one-to-one -one mix. And um, you can either do it, mix it by volume or you can mix it by weight. Uh, I've done it both ways with these epoxies and I haven't, and I, and I don't see either way, either one way better than the other. So I think the weighing is a little bit easier um, because you have a scale. So obviously the more you use, the more um, room for error you have with the epoxy. So I think take that for what it's worth. And so here we go. Get, we'll get the epoxy mixed, mix it all up, maybe throw a little bit of glitter in there. And then uh, we'll get the lure epoxy, put it on the rotisserie. And we're going to call this the body completely done once the um, epoxy is all dried up and set and cured. And then I'm going to take and wrap some feathers around it, which you'll see in the next slides. And after that, we're going to take it to a body of water and show you guys this lure in action. And we'll see what it looks like and see how it works. Now that the body of the lure is finished or the fly I should, I should say or hover or whatever you want however you want whatever you want to call it that's all done the, the finish clear coat is complete it's already set and now I am ready to start putting on the, um, the tail part of the, of the fly that's going to consist of some olive marabou uh, some greenish olive saddle hackle and then some flashaboo that I'm going to use as accent So starting off, you want to put a, I want to put a really good base of thread um, on the back. When that's all finished, when I've got that good base, I'm going to lay down the first set of material, and that's going to be the flashaboo. I'm going to cut off maybe six, seven, eight strands, somewhere around there. And when you fold them in half, you're going to have at least, you're going to have double what you cut. So you kind of want to try to keep this, uh, this stuff sparse. And... Um, and that's kind of what I did here. Made another good thread base. And then I decided to take um, two, two, two pieces of hackle. You can use more if you like. And I laid them end to end so that they kind of splayed out a little bit. Got them lined up on the hook. And then cut the... Um, I peeled off the, the webby part of the hackle. And where I'm just left with the, fi with the, um, with the fiber and then tied those in on the sides. Again, making another good base, taking some really light strands of flashaboo, adding flashaboo to that for um, some accent, and then moving on to the final part, and you could do this, as, you can use as much as you want. There's no limit. I just used one strand just to kind of get the idea. So I took 
some marabou, tied it in at the tip, and palmered it forwards like you would a hackle if you're tying a, a fly. So you start it, you start at the um, with the tip, and you wrap it forward. So that way, because the longer fibers are at the at the base of the um, of the feather versus being at the tip. And you could wrap one, you could wrap two, you could wrap three, however many you want to wrap. I just did one on this one. I wanted to try to keep it nice and sparse. And um, I think sometimes the sparser the material, the better it is. And it moves through the water a lot better. But that's just my opinion. So that's kind of what I did. And after all that is done, I make a really nice, neat, tapered head. Um, on this one, it's just going to be basically the same. So... Um, I'll get to showing you when it's all done how I tie my knot. So everything is basically done on the lure. The, the paint's done, it's finished, and I've gotten the the feathers and, every, and the flash of and everything um, all tied on. So right now I'm just putting a finish uh, putting a finished uh, thread wrap on here. I'm going to build up a nice little base. And um, what I use to secure the knot, you, um, I'm, I use a whip finish knot to, to secure this, and I do um, probably five or six turns, and I'll probably do the knot maybe two or three times before I put head cement on it. Uh, you can use a whip finish tool, but I, but I use my fing I use a, I use my fingers to do that, and um, it's kind of hard to, it's going to take a while to explain. So if you can just watch, just watch this in slow motion, and you should see how I do it. And basically, once you're done whip finishing, put the head cement on, clip the thread, and basically you are ready to go fishing. So, uh, moving on to the lure in action. Well, I want to thank everybody for watching uh, this video, and I want to thank also want to thank all of my new subscribers and new viewers for coming and watching and subscribing, and then a lot of my old. I want to thank all of my old subscribers who have stayed loyal to the channel and stay subscribed and you guys keep supporting and that's just awesome so i want you all to sit back and enjoy the learn action um you should be able to see some of the the bubbles that the that the popper is making as i'm stripping it in just take the tip of the fly rod and follow it all the way out in a straight line and you should see that popper uh so you know what with that with that said i'm gonna um just kind of close the video here and let you guys just watch me casting and uh bring this popper in and just watch the action so with um all right everybody everyone have a great day and i will see you on the next video